All right, friends, welcome to Mining Positivity with PJ. And it feels like it's been a while since I had an episode, even though it's it's only been about like eight or nine days. But for me, you know, I try to release two, three, four videos a week. Um, but I had a class last week, so things got out of pocket. But we're back now. And so welcome to episode three of season three. And today is going to be about this stuff right here. This is mud. And it's one of the new blocks in 1.19. And I was trying to make this in the last episode and I was like, man, there has to be a better way. And so I went online and I looked up some like automated mud farm stuff. And of course, it's the same thing every time. Oh, well, you need nether quartz and you need to go to the nether and you, you need to build all these contraptions and you need 50,000 resources and all this stuff. And I thought, you know what? That's all cool. But for me, I just need a bunch of mud and I need it right now. And so... I actually figured out my own way of doing this that gives you a bunch of mud relatively quickly. So I'm going to go through kind of my method of how I've been doing this and how I've been getting a lot of mud real fast. So, okay. So the first thing is to just get yourself in the middle of some semi-shallow water like this. And then pull yourself up. You want to make sure your dirt is not near the shorelines because we don't want this turning into grass. And then we're just going to go ahead and build ourselves a little platform out here. And again, making sure that we're not getting too close to anything over there. And I'm going to show you how quickly you can get a stack of 64 mud in like practically seconds. And out of all the automated farms I saw of this, this is just as fast, maybe even faster, in my opinion, I think. And it requires literally nothing. Like, you get yourself some glass, which you just need a couple bits of sand, smelt it up, and then you can make it all... All the, all the glass that you get into, like, one bottle. Oh, that's the other thing. You only need one bottle. You don't need a bunch of bottles and fill them into hoppers and all this stuff. You don't need any of that. So I'm going to show you real quick how we can do this. And so I'm just yapping right now for the sake of spending the time of actually putting this in. Now, even this part is taking a lot longer just because I'm terrible. Like, I'm terrible at this game sometimes. But, yeah, okay, so I got my little platform here. This is not going to turn into grass on me, right? I got my one thing of water. Now, I could be up here and be like, oh yeah, look, I made mud. Yeah. But there's a super fast way, and that is to just come underneath this and literally spam the button. Literally just spam the button. Swim across and spam the button. In fact, I could just hold the button down and the game will just do it for me. And since the water's pretty shallow, I can even get to the point of where I'm just standing on the ground. Now look at look at all this mud I just made without any contraption. Oh, that's that that sound is so obnoxious. I'm even going to do this right here. So that <laughs> that's more than 64 right there. Now, here's the other part of this. The reason I did this after trying this a bunch of different ways, the reason I did this up here was because once we're up here if we don't have aqua infinity, which lets you mine underwater quicker, um, I do have respiration, but even that I don't really need. You just start from the back and just work yourself backwards here. And you can mine just fine because you're on the surface. You're not actually underwater. And all your mud will just literally float up for you here in a second. You're not going to lose any of that. And this is a great method to just get a bunch of mud without really any hassle, fuss, or anything. So if you want a bunch of mud and you don't have time to build some, you know, automated mud farm, which can be great I, i'm not knocking that kind of stuff like um one of the people stoic uh that i watch online constantly he makes these huge elaborate farms and i don't i don't know if i've seen a mud farm from him but there's nothing wrong with these farms it's just it takes a lot of resources <laughs> to build them and sometimes you just need something quick and dirty you know like mud you know i just need i need mud because i want to play around with the new block and so if you're in my boat this is a great way to just get a bunch of it right away. And look at that. Like, little, little effort at all. And we got a bunch of mud. So I'm going to real quickly just do this again off camera. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me do this. Um, but I'm just going to do it again. And I've been doing this already and got a bunch of mud. And then we're going to see what we can do with this stuff. Because I haven't checked it out. Like, this is all new to me. And I want to kind of play around with it. And I also wanted to share this way that I came up with. Because... I'm not usually the guy who like invents a way of doing this and I'm sure other people are doing this too but I didn't see a video I actually was like hey this is working pretty well for me so I figured I would share it with you guys 
But uh, yeah, let me flip this to the day, get back to mud making, and then we'll be right back. Okay, I think we got a decent amount of mud now, and I've got even more in a chest from when I was doing this earlier. But another thing I really like about this too is that you can kind of like do some terraforming with this stuff and just come with your water bottle and just kind of spread some mud around it. I just like how much it changes the texture and just adds like another layer of color um, to your decorations. I don't know why my guy's wanting to like drink that stuff so much, but he's definitely thirsty. <laughs> But yeah, okay, so now we got all this mud, and the mud looks great by itself. Honestly, it's like a cool block. I love the sound it makes. And there's some cool stuff you can do with this. You can even, like, put it on a block, put some dripstone below it, and it'll turn into clay. So you can actually make, like, an infinite clay source by just digging up some dirt, turn it to mud, dry it out with some dripstone, and make clay. But honestly, I feel like that's kind of a waste, though, because clay is so abundant. And if you can get yourself... Um, a shovel that has like a uh, fortune on it or something like that you're gonna have more clay than you know what to do with unless you're building some kind of mega super farm but um yeah so there are some things we can do with this though but we need some wheat to be able to do it and so i went ahead and harvested a bunch of wheat and i changed all the um farms that i had that were carrots into wheat that are around the village so and we have some village updates but we'll look at that later on so first this first half is just going to be about the mud and again, I haven't actually seen this, so this is all going to be new to me. Uh, I have some mud here somewhere. Yep. So here's some mud I made earlier, and I didn't put it in there. But now we need the wheat. And I think I threw the wheat in this barrel over here by the cows, which the cow breeding has been going very, very well. So I get it to where they're like maxed out like this, then I feed all of them and hurry up and slaughter them so that there's nothing but babies, and then just start again and again and again. It's been going... Very, very well. I want to keep... Mm, you know what? I want to keep like that much for now. Just so we can breed up the cows again. But we'll go over here. And if we have a crafting table... In the last episode, I actually thought... Oh, you have to smelt this stuff. But no, it doesn't do anything if it's in the furnace. So you actually have to take the mud. Combine it with wheat. And then I believe you get packed mud. Now, I haven't done this yet. So let's see. Uh, muddy mangrove roots... Where is this actually going to be in here? Oh, there it is. Packed mud. So, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio, which means we're only going to get two sets of 64 of packed mud. So, let's see what this stuff looks like. Okay, that's kind of cool, actually. I feel like this would make a really good pathing block. Like, imagine that on a path road out here. Let's see what this looks like for a second. Let's go ahead and just dig some of this up. Yeah, that looks cool. I do like that. And a shovel seems to be the way to go to actually get it. So that's kind of cool, too. Let's go ahead and repair our road, because I definitely don't want to leave that looking all weird. But it doesn't stop there. Once we have our one-to-one -one ratio, it gets a little more expensive, and we can make mud bricks. And I think that's probably where we want to go as far as, like, building. So this is a... Oh. Well, no. You actually get a decent amount for that, right? It's, it's still one-to-one, -one, so you're getting two sets of 64 there. So that's not too bad. I thought it would be worse than that. And so that's our mud bricks. And I think... Oh, listen to that sound. That's interesting. So you'll want to use a pick to pick up the mud bricks. And then what can we do with these mud bricks? We can make... Mud brick stairs, and I believe you can use the stone cutter to make sure that you're also keeping that one-to-one -one ratio going. I don't think I actually have a stone cutter handy other than what I have with my villagers. So let me hop down there real quick. So yeah, we get all the normal things here. We've got our slabs, our stairs, and our walls. And so this is cool. These are some cool blocks that we can use to build with. And uh, we'll take these over to the swamp because I feel like that's where the new stuff is kind of at. We put our mangrove makeshift forest in there. 
And I wanted to change the roof out on the little temporary hut that we have over there. And we need to go over there for something a little later anyways. So I'm going to take these two sets of 64 with us. But I'm going to throw the rest of the mud down here because we're going to need some more wheat and stuff like that. So we'll leave the mud so we can combine it later on. And guys, having this storage set up has been so huge. It's so nice to be able to actually throw things away. Even in base one in our Hobbit home, I didn't really have any storage. So it, it's been difficult. It, it was very difficult there uh, to kind of keep track of where I was putting everything. And I was trying to do it like in a way that made sense but also kind of struggling. And I'm going to leave my single-use water bottle with the packed mud so I know where that is. But that's going to bring us to our next part of the episode, which is something that's been lacking for a while, which is our three fish items. We haven't done that in forever. I used to start episodes and episodes by just fishing three quick items out of the sea and kind of seeing what we, we get. Actually, there's a bed over there, so I think we're all right to just kind of hop on over there. But yeah, I miss that, so I, I definitely want to start incorporating that back into episodes. So we're going to do that. Let's head on over here, and the great thing is I've got a little bed set up with my two little buddies here. And once it gets too dark, then we can go ahead and just... I have my... Yeah, this is the secondary decent fishing rod, which we might be able to sleep real quick now. All right, well, I somehow accidentally fished the nice uh, creeper f painting I had on the wall down here. So let me get that back up. I want the creeper one. The creeper one's cool. There we go. I like that one. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to fish ourselves three items here. And hopefully we get something good. This is a pretty decent fishing rod, so we should get something good. So first up, raw salmon. Actually, I'll take raw salmon over the other fish that we could get. Yeah, this is the one, the raw cod, that you just get, like, a ton of. Alright, final one. Come on, give us something good. Something good. Mmm, okay. Two raw cod and a raw, set, raw salmon. That's not too bad. Um, and actually, I'm going to go ahead and just feed my little kitties here. Because they do get hungry, you know? They get hungry. There you go, guys good to see us i don't get to see them very often because i haven't been over here much so oh and they're purring now i don't know that i've ever heard that before like i hear them meowing all the time but i don't know that i've ever heard them purring like that that was cool okay especially as a cat person i'm super into cats so all right well that's gonna bring us to our next piece of this episode which is I've been working on something really really big and even though I had my course and I didn't have time to like edit things and you could probably see it happening behind me right now um this has been terraformed a lot like a lot so we have trees now we have shrubbery and we have a path going somewhere particular and this path is huge and goes on a long way and we're gonna take it and kind of like review what I did with the path and and what's the purpose of that. But before we do that, I had uh, one of the subscribers go ahead and mention a suggestion for naming the brand new horse that we have, which is an actual fast horse and he's actually useful. And so, sorry, I didn't want to talk over myself chewing there, but um, he's actually useful and fast and everything. And someone had the awesome, awesome idea of naming him the opposite of Ben. And naming him Neb. So I can't pass up that. That is like just fantastically perfect. I feel like that's couldn't have been any better. So we're going to do that. We're going to go ahead and put this as Neb. And we're going to go and name him. All right. So we got our Neb. And we're going to go look at our path. And then get our horse and bring him back. And I want to show you guys with this path. And this horse, how quickly we can get between the areas and things like that. And then once we come back, we'll take a look at some of the updates that have happened at this village. And we'll wrap up the episode there. So yeah. So let's go ahead and just enjoy some of the pathing. And so I'll just kind of talk about some of the things I'm doing here. It's definitely not done. It's a work in progress. But like spreading some seed 
getting some temporary lighting. I want to swap these out for lanterns at some point. I've got that awesome villager that trades for one emerald, one, one lantern, which, I mean, that's as cheap as it's going to get, even if I zombified and cured him. But I put these stones out to just kind of add something to this, and I planted a ton, ton of trees. And I put a lot of this lilac flower around because I wanted this to be almost like a lilac forest. That's kind of what I was thinking here, was like, it's kind of mossy stone and these lilacs and lots and lots of trees. I mean, like, just tree overload. We got downed logs, we've got all kinds of stuff. I'm going to be putting in some water areas and have some fish floating around in there and things like that. But this path took a long time, a long, long time. And um, I even went ahead and added mending into my diamond shovel because with Unbreaking 3, and it's still, it took a beating. Like, it took a beating to do all this pathing. So, but this has been really cool. I loved doing it. I wish I recorded some of it. I did it all off camera. I think in order for me to be able to do large, quote unquote, boring projects like this, I need to start live streaming. And that's something I want to start doing is doing some YouTube live streams when I'm doing some of these um, things that wouldn't just make like a real episode. So I planted a lot of trees here and a lot of them sprung up with um, beehives on them. So there's like bees everywhere over here. I mean, you can see a beehive there. There's a beehive on one of these trees over here. There's one over there. There's one back there that we just passed. So yeah, this has been really cool. And I have this idea that this is going to be a huge um, sunflower field. Like I'm gonna make an artificial sunflower field here. And since I've got this nice little crater started here, I'm gonna make this into a little pond with some lily pads and stuff like that. And it's just gonna give a lot of visual interest to this area. Now I'm still adding in my huge spruce trees. You know how much I love those. And so I'm gonna sprinkle those throughout as we head that way into the forest. But yeah, I'm loving this. I think it came out really, really nice. I've got these signs up right now. So that is the village of Bree. We can go that way and then Hobbiton, all are welcome this way. I had just started this, so I'm not exactly sure how I want that path to go, so I'm still kind of working that out. But the path work is not done. So here we are at our mind, but we added this little room where we can come in here. I'm gonna put some stuff together and make a little shelter in there because the bed was always out here and I don't like having these chests and stuff right here, especially this one it looks totally out of place. That one doesn't look too bad. I'd rather have a couple barrels and no chests and put storage in that room. But uh, yeah, let's continue the path this way. Like I said, I've been pathing, I've been pathing a lot, like a lot. So we wanna watch the sun to make sure that it doesn't get too dark. But yeah, we can go through this huge tunnel that I made. And this tunnel will bring us out and bring us right to our swamp base where we have our frogs. And we're going to be, in the next episode, setting up our winter frog base so that we can get the snowy frogs. So, And then finally, we'll go to a warm biome where it's sandy and warm, and we'll set up our sand base and get the third type of frog so we have all the frogs. But yeah, this is all man-made. If you're new to this channel, like, this is so easy to do. And I've just got this little hut in here, and I've got this little frog enclosure. And I'm going to go ahead... And just breed up some of these frogs real quick. So let's go ahead and grab these. And I was really critical of this when I made it. I was like, man, this looks so boring and plain and everything. But you know what? Like, it actually is not that bad. Like, when I come over here and I see this little hood and stuff, like, it's kind of cool. So, yeah, I'm not minding at all. But we've got a lot of frogs in here right now. So we'll go ahead and get these guys breeding up. I love their breed animation. I love how they put the little... Uh, eggs in the water and stuff. That's just really cool. Like, that looks awesome. And did we lose one? When it, wasn't there? Oh, there he is. Okay, so let's bring the frogs over here. They love the slime, so we'll just kind of bring them over here for a second. Make sure there's no one else we can breathe. There's not. And then once we do that, we can run away and lock it up. Because they will try to run. They don't want to be in there. They want to be free hopping and jumping around. Okay, so I did want to incorporate this mud into this build though so i'm thinking why is there a cow roaming around in the swamp is that normal do cows normally spawn in here i see pigs over there all kinds of stuff but yeah the the lushness of this area is just great i'm loving it loving it loving it but yeah i want to incorporate some of this in here maybe it's just as simple as it's the roof 
and I'm putting that in. Or maybe this is the floor? I kind of like that mossy stone. Yeah, now that I'm looking at this, I'm not exactly sure where I want to put this stuff. Originally, I was thinking, oh, it'd, it'd make for a great roof, but I kind of like... I like the look of this roof. You know what? Maybe we'll do something different. So, I do have this little furnace here. Maybe we'll make, like, a little furnace... Um, area so we'll have our place where we can get water and things like that but maybe like right here we'll build like a little little furnace area i think that could be cool yeah so maybe we'll do like two up and then we'll build like a little arch once we have our furnace in place mm. so i think maybe two furnace is probably good Hopefully I have the material. I know I had some stone and stuff with me last time I was here. Let's take a look inside and see what we got. I don't know if I kept enough. Oh, yeah. We're good. We're good, we're good, we're good. So let's go ahead and craft ourselves up another. I don't see myself actually needing this. Like, it's this isn't an area where I need, like, a ton of things. But it allows us to use this little stone area... Oh, you know what would be cool is to put some fireplaces over here and have, like, some smoke and stuff coming out? So we should probably do that. Um, can I make myself a stone cutter? We need stone to make a stone cutter, of course. And I don't... Can I help? The wildlife here is just super awkward. Just super, super awkward. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a little bit of coal in here. Not, not too much. Just a little bit and get a little bit of this smelting up. Maybe we'll put like six pieces in there. We'll go ahead and flip this today because I don't want to be messing around with some creepers in the swamp. This is not an area where you can easily like <laughs> see creepers and see what's going on around you. I do like these windows that I can open up and see my frogs hopping around in there. That's pretty cool. These dudes can hop in through the window? No. Get, get. I didn't know they could do that. <laughs> What in the world? Guys, I'm sorry I had to punch you, but geez. Geez, guys. Geez. Okay. Alright, we got some stone. That should be all we need for a stone cutter. I think we better put a crafting table here. Just because we... Whoa. You can hear our eggs hatching already from our frogs, so that's cool go ahead and make ourselves this stone cutter put that down there make a couple slabs make a couple stairs and just a couple of these walls okay so, let's see what we can do here. We'll probably use these stairs to do some kind of roofing area. Maybe I'm thinking like something like this. Okay. Then we can come in one. Put like a slab down here. So that we can put our Stairs back on it. Yeah, that looks cool. Then we can go ahead and use these stabs, or <laughs> stabs, use these slabs to kind of fill in the back area here. Alright, cool. Yeah, I do like the look of this block. It is a cool-looking block. Oh, I hear some more of the tadpoles hatching over here, which means we've got some babies. Um, yeah, we're getting, like, frog crazy in here now. Yeah, look at that. Look how many frogs are in here. There's so many frogs and so many tadpoles and everything. So one thing I recently found out is if there is a an entity above the water and the frogs are in the water, they can't get out. So I might actually just drop this down and then the frogs will be stuck in the water. They will not be able to get out. We'll be able to breed them and we won't have to worry about them escaping on us. So 
kind of wanted them to have like a little area where they can jump out and do their froggy thing, but I don't know. Actually, yeah, because it's okay if a few of them escape. I don't want to like barricade them in there. It's fine. And so what else can we do here to make this look kind of cool? Do we want to bring this down one like that? That looks cool. And then maybe we'll put like some item frames back there with something to kind of decorate it. But yeah, that looks like a little furnace area. And then let's play around with these brick walls a little bit. What can we do with these? Can we maybe we'll just like block off some areas? Maybe to help with like some protection. So if like creepers spawn, they can't jump up here and just attack us. This could be something cool we do with this, this block. Uh, guys, I really don't know what to do with these blocks because they're so new and I haven't really got to play with them too much. So I'm just kind of throwing them out there just so we have something to kind of look at here. But yeah, that looks cool. I like the way that looks. I mean, it's it's nothing. It's just some blocky wall. And if an entity forms over here, like a skeleton or something, they can't actually jump up here and get near our base. So it's it's practical. But I like this. This looks cool. Yeah. I love the sound. That's such a weird sound. I like it. Okay, so we got that in there. We'll go ahead and leave all of this here because we will come back and we'll probably wind up building something else out of all this. But for now, that's all we needed. And so we're going to go back and we're going to name Neb our new horse and ride him back to the village where we're going to look at some updates and then we'll call the episode there. So let's head back to Neb. And guys, I love coming down this pathway. It just feels really good. Came out super well. I'm loving it so much. And let's go ahead and name our horse. There is Neb and he is amazing. I love Neb so much because he's so fast. And yeah, we could take him and ride him back to the village. And just look, look how quickly we can get back. And so I did trim some of these trees, but I didn't remove all of the ones that were right near the path because I kind of like the way it looks. So, and it's fun kind of riding through the stone and making sure like I can get through and it, it just adds a little element to it. But yeah, I'm loving this path. Like, it's just a lot of fun to be able to look at these things and make the world start feeling more and more like it's lived in and it has some kind of history to it. And there was an actual sign about the swamp, but I didn't bring it up because we're gonna look at that in a different episode as well. But maybe if you saw it, you got a little sneak peek into something. But yeah, all right. Now, let's go ahead and just take a look at what's going on in the village. And so we've got a couple updates. One of the things is I continued to expand our little breeding area right down here. So. Every time I put a bed in here, the, it's too far away. Now, villagers can path through blocks, like solid blocks. So if I had the beds right here on this layer, they could path right through the floor and get into the bed and be stuck down here. Or even worse, wake up and then die by hitting the dirt. So if you're going to do something like this, make sure that you're at least two or three blocks away from the villagers with your bedding. But every time I place a bed down there, they will breed up and add more guys. And you can see we've got even more villagers in here. These two uh, nitwit villagers will never have any jobs, but they're great for breeding. So I keep them around. They're going to be our infinite breeders forever. And when I tear this building down and turn this into little trading areas, uh, I'm going to stick the two nitwits downstairs and then we'll make a bubble column to get villagers up. But with all the cats that are spawning from me doing all this breeding, they are great at repelling creepers. And so the one thing that my trading hall is vulnerable to is a creeper blast. So if a creeper was here and he blasted, there's a chance that he could freak villagers and or kill them. So I put a lot of cats here and I'm going to keep adding cats as they spawn and breed up. And they're just adorable. This little guy right here. So when I'm going to sleep in this house, like I'm doing my farming and stuff, I look out the window and he's just chilling there looking adorable. He looks so cute. Oh, uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I got the cats here. That's an improvement. And we started spawning a bunch of iron golems because now, now we've reached the 21 villager. I think it's 20 or 21, and then you'll start spawning in golems. But I tied them up. I don't want them walking around. The reason being is because there's a lot of areas where they can fall off a cliff and then destroy my crops. 
Like, I don't need some golem coming over here and then plopping down there and destroying my crops. Just unnecessary. So we had the one spawn up there. We had the one spawn, and I stuck them over here. And as we can continue to get more and more, I will kind of lace them around the village. They're still able to do what they do. They can still guard, attack, and do all that stuff. I finally got around. I know I talked about this a couple episodes about putting some lava stream in here. And I, how cool I thought that would be. I don't think it's reached the ground because every time I look down there, I don't see it. And I don't think it can until I actually go down there and load in that area. But, but yeah, I finally got that in. We're going to get some villagers over here. I'm thinking maybe one, two, and have them be a leather worker. I think that would make sense for them to be in that area. I don't want any farmers because I don't want the farmers to mess up my stuff. So all the villagers I'm breeding now are almost exclusively to be walking around. This right here. So I harvest this. And then I threw all my seeds in here for bone meal and then turned around and realized, wait, I didn't plant any. <laughs> so I had to go to the other village and grab some more uh, seeds and now I'm trying to replenish that. But yeah, the last thing we're going to look at here is our villager trading hall, which is almost complete, guys. We're down to the last two slots here. I'm thinking both of these are going to be for when we have brewing stands and I can put those villagers in there and trade up with them so i might just throw two of them temporarily down there but yeah we've got one here so we've got our weapon smith here now and he'll be able to sell as a belt i don't know that's really expensive for a belt man that's crazy hmm do i buy this right now why not right we don't have a bell here we have one in the other vill village but it might be nice to have a bell so we could stick that maybe here for now yeah, and look, already they're getting... I saw somebody get an effect from that. So the bell's good. It helps um, improve morale and their trading and all that stuff. It can lower prices, that kind of thing. So yeah, that was good. And it didn't quite level him up. I was hoping we could kind of see what his next trade was. But we got him. We got this Fletcher over here. We've got this armor. And we've got this Toolsmith. So like I said, we have every possible trader at this point. And some redundancy. We've got two of the um, spell guys. They're not called spell guys. Librarians. <laughs> you know, the spell guys. So we got two of those. It's definitely dark out. I can tell it's dark out. I hate letting it be dark here because I don't want things spawning in this village. I don't want skeletons. I don't want creepers. I don't want any of that stuff. I don't want to give them a chance to cause any havoc here. But um, So I try to flip it. Anytime I'm in this area, I try to flip it right away. But yeah. So this is almost completely done. Like I said, we don't have what we need to start making brewing stands yet, but I think the last two are both going to be brewing stands because I've got so much rotten flesh from that other area. But yeah, this is great. It's it's coming along great. I love working on the village. And like I said, if I do some uh, live streams, then we can actually see some of the work in progress and happening and things like that. We're going to put one last house here, I think. We're going to tear this down, and this is going to be a training area. We're also going to... Did I see something bad in there? No. Okay. Uh, we're also going to put a large trading area right there. So when you enter the village, there'll be trading options. And then right over here, I'm going to make a large um, loom area where I can have like a banner section, and I can put resources to come over here and make banners so that's why i've left this area intentionally kind of plain is because that's what i want to do here and i have a design in mind for that and i think it's going to look really really cool and it's just going to be cool. i also have a villager trading me um fireplaces and i can collect some of these hay bales i've made or make some more and start getting some smoke into these um these beehives so we can start getting honey and things like that but yeah all right guys thank you so much for joining me I was hoping to keep this one a little shorter, but it might have ran a little longer than I intended. But hopefully you guys enjoyed it. It's raining as it always is here in Minecraft Bedrock Edition. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next episode of Mining Positivity. Bye, friends.